Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is hopefully going to be a quick video showing you how to fix your Bissell cleaner. The water tank is full, the Bissell solution tank is full, but for some reason um, there was no water. When I hit the trigger in the back, there was no water or any solution being sucked back up. I've gone ahead and taken off the screw. First of all, I unplugged it. I took off the screw here, and then there's one on each side here. There's actually a secondary screw down here. I've already taken my finger and kind of cleared the way, but I think this is probably where the water shoots out at and there just was so much gunk in front of there, it wasn't allowing that to happen. So hopefully that is the problem and there isn't like a problem with a bell or the uh, actual trigger switch. There's just so much gunk. Look at all of this. There's all this build up gunk from carpet. I'm assuming the problem is it couldn't come out in, in the first place. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, put it back together and give it a whirl and hopefully that is what it took to fix it. I, try, I plugged everything back in and that does not seem to be the problem. I think there might be a clog. I actually stored that cleaner in the tank and I think just based on what I saw underneath, I have a feeling there is a clog in here. So what I'm gonna do is take a screwdriver and take all this off and see if I can find some type of a plug somewhere. Okay, there were a couple screws there, 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 and there, which was looked like that. Okay, the lines, just a quick look over here i'm not seeing any apparent jams everything looks fairly clean so i am going to look in i'm i'm thinking there's some type of a build up within i i think this is the, the heater but i can already see like some corrosion and stuff on that okay i got all the screws out oh holy smokes i'm gonna clean that out and then I'm gonna check, double check all of these other lines. I think that I've learned not to store, I think the soap just gets built up. We do have hard water, I live in the country. I'm gonna go get a Q-tip. Okay, so I'm gonna try to clean this and hold my camera steady. Um, that's just really disgusting, look at that. Gross. I would suggest putting, looks like we're going into surgery here. Oh, yuck gross. If I had this out in my shop, I might even get my air compressor out and try to blow that out. Um, but I'm going to clean this. Oh, grody. It's like cottage cheese or something in there. Mm. If you have a problem with water spraying, I honestly think this is probably the first place I'd check. All right, so that is all the crud I dug out of there. Um, one thing to be very cautious of, there's like these little red washers or gaskets, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're located here. You want to make sure you don't lose any. And that obviously is the soap because it, can, it smells like soap. And the flow obviously is blocked. So I'm going to try to put it back together, maybe checking a couple of these tubes and fire it up and see if the water and the soap doesn't flow now. Okay, I have it reassembled. I'm gonna turn it on and see if it works. Okay, so I wanna show you this. A couple other things while I have this apart. This is actually the filter that goes on the bottom of the water tank and it does pop apart. Um, so I took that and I ran that and flushed it under hot water. And I do believe that the one with, I believe this, I believe this tank also has one of these at the bottom. So I'm gonna flush that out. And yet another place to check in the top of the head of this vacuum where the tank is, there's another filter. So I took that off and washed it too. It had some crud in it. For good measure, I'm also going to take these off and clean them. Probably gonna need some type of pliers and squeeze this part, and I'm gonna take these off and wash them well. 
All right, so I have those back on, but I'm kind of looking at these tubes. This right here looks like a lot of crystallization right here and build up. That looks like there might be some sediment in there too. Um, I'm just gonna kind of clean out every hose. And I also don't like taking things apart because I often, I'm like, well, how did I put them back together? So what I would suggest is before you take anything apart, take a photo of it first. That way you can look back and see exactly what it is you took apart. This is a lot of the electrical. I really don't want to touch that. I just do think though that these things need taken apart and that that could be a huge problem right there. That looks like a buildup. Um, I took some of these apart. I'm getting very familiar with this system. You're going to need to use some type of pliers. I have my needle nose pliers. It's kind of hard to film this and do it, um, but I'm gonna squish that and take that apart next. I cleaned out this line. I cleaned out that line. Where it is it had very fine, as you can see, like a buildup in there. Here's some more gunk that I was able to get out. But then I noticed within this line, um, it looks like there's a buildup there, and I did notice it was odd that not only wasn't water coming out the front here like it's supposed to, but also this tool, this hand tool here with the sprayer, nothing was coming out there too. I think that goes up through the vacuum, and ultimately I think the other end of it is right here. So <laughs> I'm going to take this apart, try to rinse it maybe from this side. Okay, I think that worked, or is working. I think that was it. I poured, what I did was took that other end and poured it in the sink. Um, and I didn't think that'd be enough to flush it, but I held it up a little bit and let gravity work and it flushed all of that junk out. So I'm gonna try to reassemble it and give it a try. Okay, so the more I look, the more clogs I find. This is now clear. And then I was getting ready to put this back and that's just for the heck of it, I thought I'd look here. And as I pull this coil back, look at that there's a massive clog there too. So I'm gonna take it apart here and empty all that out. I'm gonna put a paper towel underneath it because I don't want the inside of this to be all wet. So here's another area to look at. And um, I do believe these are clear. I think I looked at them earlier, but if you want to know for sure, these coils kind of obscure blockage, but it looks, Is there anything in there? That actually looks like it's pretty clear. Let me see if my camera will pick that up. So that looks like it's clear from there to there. And those look okay. I'm gonna check this one too. All right. So, all right, there's some blockage in here. I've also been using a paper clip to kind of some of these connections. I kind of reamed that out with that. So, all right, let's take a look at this and then maybe I'll partially assemble it and try to run a little water through. Ugh, gross. So there is a little crud. Did I get it all? I just want to make sure I got it all. And it looks like I did. It looked really bad. It looks like a lot more buildup in the tube than that. Um, there is a little bit. I'm going to take that pipe cleaner and get the rest out. But there is some buildup that could have been enough just to block this. And I'm going to make sure that this is clear too. Could that have been enough to keep it from working? I don't know. Combined all these blockages, yes. All right, so this did not work before. What I'm doing is just kind of letting the heater run and flushing the water out into the sink.
I think really helped was to full throttle run the water through the hand tool because you can get like a nice spray coming out. And I think I did about three loads of this tank and now I see that the water is actually coming through the front. So I think that that just needed time for all of those things to unclog and running it through the hand tool rather than through all of these very fine things in the front. I think that was the trick. So I actually fixed it and I'm gonna show a closing shot of it working.